Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you're joining me today to see the greatest new cars in the world. We're here at the Quail during Monterey Car Week, surrounded by the very best and plenty of new introductions. We're talking the likes of the Zenvo Aurora. We have Aurora Agil, and we also have Aurora Tour. We have Gunther Works, we have Rimats, we have Bugatti. Bugatti, in fact, with the new W16 Mistral and also a very special Chiron Supersport. We have the launch of the new Lamborghini concept. We also have Hennessy with the Venom F5 Revolution Roadster, the likes of the Ford Mustang GTD, and that's just the start. Let's go for a tour around here at the Quail and go and see some of the very special cars that are on display. Let's begin right here and what an impressive display we have from Hennessy Performance. Up on the stage we have the new Hennessy Venom F5 Revolution Roadster but they begin with a display of I believe 10 in total customer cars that have attended Car Week. We start with the original F5 which launched a few years ago. We have a 1816 horsepower 6.2 litre V8 nicknamed Fury. They then introduced the Roadster taking it from the 24 original coupes adding an additional 30 Roadsters. Then after those came the Revolution, of which there were a further 24. The updated aero, as you can see, even longer front splitter, massive spoiler out towards the rear, and then they have just launched this that we're coming through to see, the Revolution Roadster, of which 12 are being made in total, and six of those 12 can be opted with the full exposed carbon fiber bodywork, as you can see here. Plus, we now get to hear and enjoy the sound of fury with the cars running as well. But look at this, the yellow accents and details against the exposed carbon bodywork, that view through towards the engine. I went to take a look when the car was originally introduced. What a piece of impressive hypercar that Hennessy managed to launch. And listen to this. This is the sound of these, the cars all on together. That's a good way to get this show started, the highlights of Quail for you. The sounds of the Venom F5s. They've put on a show and a half here. I don't know where to look. <laughs> that is amazing. That is the sound of America right now. That is the absolute sound of America. Everyone grabs their camera phones. The doors are up. What a start. Wow, 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 wow. Nice work, Hennessy. We move to Gunther Works, who have presented this, the new Touring Turbo Edition Coupe, based, of course, on the 993-911 Turbo. Now, this boasts a whopping 750 horsepower, the 4-litre flat six found in the back, reimagining the 993 generation cars with a modern twist. You see that through the design of the taillights, the bodywork, but very much that original style. We also have the Speedster, finished with a full exposed carbon fibre body. Look at the magnificent work with this fighter jet tailpipes back there. Come take a look inside the car, those carbon shell bucket seats that you have as well. I've driven a Gunther Works before, but these look immaculate. Full carbon fibre dashboard, truly, truly beautiful. And in fact, as well as the new car, there's also another of the speedsters just over towards this side as well. Some very exciting news today from Rimats and the Navira because it is now the world record holder for a production EV at the Nürburgring Nordschleife with a lap time of just seven minutes and five seconds around the green hell. To celebrate, we're looking at the new Navira Time Attack Edition, limited to only 12 units in total. And against this deep, dark grey metallic paint, we have the lightning green accents, the stripes that run over the top, the wheels and the lower aero parts as well. It's a link back to Mate's favourite E30 M3. Now, there's a little bit of an easter egg to come and show you back here underneath the carbon exposed carbon rear wing if i just poke my camera here dedicated to those coming after us i hope you can just about see that with the sunlight on the underside of the rear wing what a nice fun little nod for the car that is now a 25 times world record holder with various different acceleration lap times and more records under its belt this is quite extraordinary on the Bugatti stand. We've got two cars to take a look at, but we start with this Chiron Supersport via the Sur Mesure program. This is the Bugatti Chiron Supersport Golden Era. And look at these sketches. Over 400 hours of work, 
using 45 different sketches into the paintwork. An example of how Bugatti can go further than anyone else to create a totally bespoke vehicle. We've got the 8 litre quad turbo W16 making 1,600 horsepower and very much with the golden theme, the W16 Mistral behind. But not only do you have these artworks on the exterior of the vehicle showcasing the history of Bugatti all the way through, spotting the EV110s, the different models, La Voiture Noire, for example, here, the Purse Sport, the Bolide even, the Super Sport 300 Plus, but they continue through with the graphics that are integrated into the leather on the door cards of the inside of the car as well. But alongside that, we have the W16 Mistral, launched here at Quail last year, a celebration of the W16 engine, limited to 99 cars, and with many of the customers now going through the configurations of their vehicles, this is presented to give them an opportunity to see what can be done, to start to understand more of the different options, more of the features that are available, and of course to see the example of the Surmazur program when creating something completely bespoke with a vehicle such as the Bugatti Mistral. We have to take a look then at this, the new Maserati MC Extrema. This is based on the MC20, featuring the Natuno as an ultimate track car. We have 730 horsepower from the 3-litre turbocharged V6. We have this radical design, limited to only 62 cars in total. Quite a big departure from the regular car on which it's based. It was nicknamed P24, the code name for it. But look at this, the snorkel over the top, the shark fin over the back, and then this fascinating wing back here. And even the tail lights with the trident shape, the Maserati logo. I also want to draw attention to the Gran Turismo Fulgore here. This is actually painted in this chrome paint with hand etched design details over it. This is not a wrap. That's the full electric version of the Maserati Gran Turismo. And then on the other side, we have the Gran Turismo Trofeo, which features the Natuno engine as well, but retaining those original beautiful looks of the Gran Turismo that we all know and love from the older generations into the new car. Quite a lineup from Maserati, it has to be said. Very exciting where this is going. And it also has to be said that all 62 of the MC Extrema are already spoken for. There is a wait list for the vehicle. They are sold out, which is very impressive and very exciting to see and hear from Maserati as well. We're here then at Koenigsegg with two familiar cars. This is the new Jamira in its production spec, the world's most powerful production car. 2,300 horsepower now, thanks to the inclusion of the five litre twin turbocharged V8 combined with the hybrid and electric system, the four seater, four wheel drive, insanely fast machine that we saw at the Goodwood Festival of Speed. Just a quick glimpse inside the cabin, of course, comfortable four seater, two door. Now, if we come to this side, we have the blue Yesco, the very car that I actually drove myself recently over in England. During the Goodwood Festival of Speed, I drove this car out on the roads to experience what it was like. One and a half thousand horsepower from that V8. 125 cars in total. This is the Yesco Attack with the boomerang wing. You can see at the back as opposed to Absolute with the smoother, more streamlined bodywork attempting to achieve 300 miles per hour. But to see both the Yesco and the Jamira again here on another continent, I'm not complaining about it. A fair few heads returned at the introduction of this at the Festival of Speed, the Singer DLS Turbo. Limited to 99 units, the DLS Turbo has a 3.8 litre twin turbocharged flat six, which can rev to 9,000 RPM, produces 700 horsepower, and the car features multiple different iterations of the bodywork. We actually have the power plant back here. You can see the cooling and the way that this is presented, beautifully finished with carbon fiber across. But I want to come around and show you over here the optional extras that you can purchase so the even larger wing configuration, which was shown for the hill climb run at Goodwood, combined with a replacement bumper for the front, of course, matching the aero profiles and ensuring that those fit best together. Of course, that's an option customers can choose either specification or take both, in which case they are provided in these rather fantastic presentation boxes for display in the garage as well. Now, if we sneak back over here, we can have a very quick glimpse through to the interior. Look at the exposed six-speed gearbox linkage in the center, the carbon seats with those wraparound ear pieces on the shoulder blade pieces I should say and the way that this is finished the singers are in a league of their own the Hispano Suiza Carmen Boloin in fact I experienced the passenger ride in this car at the Festival of Speed Hill Climb this very car of the more track orientated track focused derivative of the Hispano Suiza this being the Carmen Boloin limited in number carbon fiber body you can have even more power from it as well and plenty more of that if you'd like to check out the video riding on board it Aston Martin have just launched the DB5 
the 12 Volante, of course, a natural addition to the portfolio after upgrading from the DB11 to the DB12. Plus, take a look at this Valor. The Valor was also launched recently. A manual gearbox, a big V12 engine, retro throwback looks, 110 cars to celebrate the 110th anniversary of Aston Martin this year. To be honest, this is just a fantastic thing. Obviously comes with quite the price tag through Aston Martin's Q division, but just look at the design of it. Really, really, really cool details about this. And a V12 with a manual is always going to be a winner. A fun lineup here at McLaren, including the first customer Solus GT, the first of the 25 V10 powered McLaren track cars. We saw this car at the display stand at the Goodwood Festival of Speed, but now its customer, who's located out here in California, is soon to be taking delivery. And of course, my cameras rode on board one up the hill. We also have the 750 S Spider, plus we have the M8D Can Am car, which is quite fun to see on display. Display, a very different trio of McLarens and uh, the Formula One cars behind that we can spot as well. Newer car and a Marlboro livery era car back there too. I'd love to get behind the wheel soon of the new Rolls-Royce Spectre. Of course, electric cars aren't necessarily going to attract the hearts of petrol heads, but when it comes to a Rolls-Royce, the aim has always been to create something that's effortless and silent. So the combination on paper is right up there and hopefully I'll get an opportunity to try one before long. Two very exciting cars here with Lotus. We have the Avaya, but not just any Avaya. This is Jensen Button's personal car. The painted design livery, of course, a throwback to his 2009 Formula One World Championship winning Braun F1 car with the white and black and those lime green nods. There are some lovely, lovely details of this. I've actually had a full look around with Jensen to go through it all, which has been fascinating. Obviously, Lotus's 2000 horsepower electric hypercar. Then if we squeeze around past Evaya and its crazy wind channels through the bodywork to the other side over here, we have the new Type 66. I think they're just doing a photograph right now, but this has been introduced, limited to only 10 cars based off Colin Chapman's original design drawings from 1969 of a Can-Am car for the 1970 racing season with a 5.8 litre V8 making a whole lot of power weighing not very much and a lot of downforce. Ogara have brought a very exciting lineup starting with the Tag Turbo and in fact still wearing its Goodwood Festival of Speed sticker as well in the windscreen but this is effectively a Tag F1 engine in a 911. Yes, you heard that right. It is insane. We then have the LM25, limited to only 25 cars. A bit of a nod back to the McLaren F1 that raced in Le Mans, for example, with the wheels and the different styling cues, the Union Jack that you can spot painted into the lacquer of the front, the different seats that this wears as well inside, limited to only 25 units based on the 765 LT Spider from Lanzante. We've then got the P1 HDK next to the P1 GTR 18. These two together, in fact, I believe this was even presented here a couple of years ago at the Quail. This with the throwback livery over the top of it as well, taking the McLaren P1s, effectively dialing them up to GTR spec and well, they're quite bonkers, aren't they really? It's not every day you have a Ferrari F50 rolling through, one of 349. In fact, this car is in Rosso Rubino, one of only eight originally painted in that color. And I know that thanks to exclusive car registry, which I always recommend checking out if you'd like to see more of those kind of things to find out a lot more detail as the Ferrari 812 GTS is heading out that way. Many different areas, many different cars. In fact, a display from the Peterson Museum in Los Angeles of some art cars here as well. At the stand of Automobili Pininfarina, we have the Batista Nino Farina, a car that pays tribute to Nino Farina, a limited edition of the Batista electric hypercar. Nino was the winner of the first ever Formula One World Championship. Next to that, the Pura Vision concept, very much design study. And in fact, you're going to see how that's led on to the next car we're taking a look at here, but very much giving ideas where they could head in the future before we move to this. The introduction here, the B95, standing for Barchetta 95, as Pininfarina will celebrate their 95th anniversary in 2025, the year these will enter production. You can start to see some of those design elements coming through, but this is the world's first full electric Barchetta, full electric open driving experience with the powertrain from the Batista. So we're talking 1,900 horsepower, 2,300 newton meters of torque, and of course, a car that I think looks incredible, painted in these bright colors with the yellow accents with the houndstooth interior over the top of the 
tan leather for the inside. Lots of lovely design, of course, as we expect from Automobili Pininfarina and having adjustable windshields. With the window switches on the center console, you can raise these to deflect the air away from the experience inside. But with zero to 60 miles an hour in sub two seconds, with the open top experience, you can bet that's gonna be exhilarating. I've beelined straight to this. It's not every day that you see a Ferrari 250 GTO, the holy grail of 1960s Ferraris. Only 36 in total of the GTOs, the original legend. And it's just parked here. In fact, alongside a 275 GTB4 alloy and a 250 mm, this is, I, I mean, I'm just absolutely in awe. This is, this is the car. This is the, like, the, the most legendary machine that you could imagine and it's just here at the quail. I, I'm almost a little bit speechless just taking this in, just thinking about what that represents right in front of us there. Two more F50s, a Rosso Corsa F50 just there. Then we have a Ferrari Enzo right in the middle, which I think has done some serious road miles. This is the car that I think it is. It's basically been driven across the entirety of the country. So it's gonna come around the back. Yes, it is. It's come all the way here. California or bust at Share the Enzo, all the way over from Massachusetts, which is amazing. We then have a yellow F50. That's basically my dream, a yellow F50. It's, I mean, there aren't all that many of them, but this car in yellow, one of my first experiences as a passenger in an F50, I will never forget it, and it's stunning. We've got a 599 GTO, 458, 458 Spider, a couple of other Ferraris. What a lineup out here. Here with Zinger, we're taking a look at the 21C. This is the Blackbird edition. We're checking out the engine. Look at this. Look at the componentry, the revolutionary work that the team at Zinger are doing, using AI to optimize the material, obviously saving as much weight as possible, keeping the strength and rigidity. But we've got a 2.88 liter twin turbocharged V8 hybrid car pushing out tons of power. But take a look, the unique tandem seating position within the carbon fiber tub, obviously that central seat, incredibly aero-based, immensely fast and capable. The two cars that are here, obviously the Blackbird edition, the more track focused, but when you take a look at some of the underpinnings and start to get a feel for what they're doing and how all of these different components are actually manufactured, how they're pieced together, how they support the car and how AI generates the requirements, saving as much weight as possible, giving it all the strength that it could possibly need and ultimately producing something that's no doubt going to be very, very impressive to pilot. A quick visit to GMA because this is the Gordon Murray Automotive T50S Nikki Lauda. There are going to be 25 customer cars, but this is the first prototype, XP1, of the famous fan car. In fact, just to poke around towards the back very quickly, we're talking a car that weighs only 860 kilos, boasts 780 horsepower, and is track only, of course, as you might be able to tell from the way that it's finished on the interior. Now, alongside the T50S Nikki Lauda, we also have the stunning T33 Spider. Following on the heels of the T33 Coupe, the Spider arrived, uh, I guess, earlier this year. There are going to be 100 of these produced as per the 100 of the Coupe, again, featuring the fabulous Cosworth V12 engines that we have just here. 600 horsepower from the naturally aspirated 12-cylinder power plant developed by Cosworth for Gordon Murray Automotive. Now, I'm going to pop down got the great man himself just here to this particular T50 which is in fact the very first customer T50 out there this is car number one it's just been delivered in I fact the customer that. has been driving it this week and it's here on the lawn at the quail we're getting towards the end of the day and the car's therefore heading out so the Lamborghini Revuelto moving silently of course being Lamborghini's new hybrid V12 supercar, over a thousand horsepower though, but they have also at this event introduced this, the Lanzador, which is their take on a fourth model to join the lineup, a full electric sports two plus two. Very distinct Lamborghini design DNA. It's certainly been wowing the crowds at the quail. You can spot all of the familiar hexagons, triangular shapes. There's active aerodynamics with these blades that can slide forwards and backwards, but very much a strict two door vehicle, comfortable interior, and a new generation of Lamborghini. In fact, take a look through here. You've got areas of the car you can see straight through. Active aero here with a splitter that can lower down, opening up access to the brake ducts for further cooling when required. But really, taking a new generation, we can have a quick peek at the interior as well, sliding round. Of course, renewable materials, sustainable interior, bringing the controls very much to that of the pilot configuration, the steering wheel, the new dashboard, the new interface, and the new setup. Really exciting to have seen this being launched and presented out here, wowing the crowds. Thank you.
There is also a great display of Porsche 959s, as you can see. Some of the cars have already departed. We have the 2.7 RSs just through there as well, part of the Porsche display at this event. Plus, take a look here, Aston Martin V12 Speedster, one of 88, followed by the Bugatti Centodieci. This is one of only 10, the modern take on the Bugatti EB110. And in fact, this car with the racing livery is a tribute to the EB110 SS race car from back then. That's quite special to see that just driving past us here. That's not, not, not a normal thing. The 959s are fantastic as well. There are so many amazing cars around, but we're not done yet. One of my favorite cars of all time, well, arguably two of my favorite cars of all time, the Aston Martin 177. Just listen to the grumble of that V12 as it rolls past. Just stunning, simply stunning. <laughs> These guys drove on Gumball 3000 with that car. Last year, Toronto to Miami. And the third 177 is heading past us. I believe there have been five around today. That's, yeah, that's quite something, isn't it? There are three cars here from Roof to take a quick look at. This is the R Spider, a modern take on classic design, Barquetta open experience, but in a 911 format. We then have the CTR3 Evo. So an update of the popular CTR3. I've seen many of them around the world over the years. And this car in this blue paint with the matching wheels. Quite an out there bold choice. We lastly have the Tribute. This is an air-cooled car, new introduction, celebrating 60 years of the Porsche 911. It's been introduced of course, featuring all of the latest full roof upgrades, but giving that throwback feel in a new version of the car. We're going to take a little listen to the Tribute. Air-cooled, 3.6 litre, 550 horsepower, flat six. Let's take a listen to the startup. Oh. That's a throwback sound and smell if ever there was. Next rolling past, Mercedes SLR McLaren Roadster. Always lovely cars. It may currently be lifted for transport on its way out from the event, but this is the new Ford Mustang GTD. And this is one that I have been so excited about in many ways following on from the Ford GT, a collaboration with Multimatic to build the ultimate Mustang of the new generation, the seventh gen S650, based around the 5.2 litre supercharged V8, making 800 horsepower, but now a Mustang with a transaxle, eight speed dual clutch transmission in the back, 50-50 weight distribution. Look at this bodywork the size of these arches, this ginormous wing at the back, DRS with the upper level as well, the way it's mounted out of the rear window. Look at the fender arches as we come round. We've got magnesium wheels. We've got Cup 2R rubber tires. We've got an incredibly aggressive look to the car. Of course, the headlights sitting underneath this eyebrow running over the top of them. Look at the splitter. Look at the flicks around the side. This is a car that I am so very excited about as somebody who's driven a lot of miles with my Shelby GT500 carbon fiber track pack, but this with a rumored $300,000 price tag is certainly one to watch when Ford announced the allocations and the processes for them ahead. The GTD being the Grand Touring Daytona, the homologation car, if you will, of the car that will be racing and participating in the 24 hours of Daytona and also the 24 hours of Le Mans and many more races coming forward. A Mustang that is now a supercar. Just imagine it sitting two or three inches a little bit lower down with the tires into the arches. Of course, at the end of the day, it's basically ready to head out. This is exciting for me personally at least, the new Mustang Dark Horse, which is in the exact spec that I've gone for. Wow, look at that. Listen to that. Insane. Mustang Dark Horse in white with the livery. Obviously the Dark Horse gives you the more aggressive appearance. The handling pack gives you the wider wheel setup, the Trofeo RS tires. But this is actually the first time I've ever seen one in my spec and my car is not exactly far away now in fact i think it's going to be a matter of weeks before i'll be able to head over to detroit to take delivery of the new dark horse the s650 seventh gen mustang as always there's an amazing display from pagani we've got the zonda r alongside this glorious green carbon huayra r that actually belongs to a collection that i visited not all that long ago out in texas which is very very cool we've got one of the early zondas we've got utopia sitting central state in fact, we just blast past. That's a full carbon, full exposed carbon car. The Huayra sitting behind. And check out this, Huayra Roadster BC. 
with quite an extreme livery. Look at the way that's painted on over the top. Pagani obviously creating a lot of very, very bespoke vehicles to the customer's wishes. Last, but by no means least. In fact, I could even say saving the best to last. We are back here at Zenvo with Aurora. We have Aurora Agil and Aurora Tour. There are 100 cars in total, 50 of each derivative. Both are road legal versions. The Agil that we're looking at here, of course, has the more extreme bodywork, the ginormous wing at the back, all of these openings and cutaways when you start to look through the bodywork. Both cars are powered by a 6.6 litre quad turbo V12 with the combustion engine making 1,250 horsepower. In Agil, by default, it's rear driven with a single electric motor for a total output of 1,550. In Tour, by default, it's all wheel drive with two electric motors in addition up front for a total of 1,850. Now you could have Tour rear driven or you could have Agil all wheel drive, but looking around these two cars, Aurora, of course, the colors, the themes carried through with the difference being that this is more focused on a more comfortable driving experience, completely different bodywork. You'll notice the way it comes around, for example, underneath the front headlights, whereas it doesn't on Agil. Similarly, around the side, in fact, the rear decks and rear bumpers completely different between the two cars, looking absolutely glorious out here in the sunshine right now. The exposed suspension, for example, that we have back there, coming around, exploring the car and taking it all in. In fact, I'm going to pop open the doors, which is done just here, releasing inside, and then the door pops up and we can take a look at the interior of this wonderful machine. Seat covers in place at the moment, the sporty finish, Danish design brought to the hypercar world. The dashboard dials, which have those analog presents or at the press of a button, rotate to reveal the digital screens. Further controls on the steering wheel itself, all within a carbon fiber monocoque, reducing weight with the most incredible openings through the bodywork. Obviously, as an owner of the previous generation TSRS, I am very, very excited for all of the team at Zenvo for what they've managed to achieve with the new cars, to bring them here to the Quail, to present them to the world, and knowing that a lot of customers are starting to get very excited for what they've done with these. I think that is the best looking hypercar of this time. It's unbelievable. There are so many wonderfully beautiful cars around, it's impossible to talk about every single one. I'm going to point out the Icento Diecci that's here because that's two of ten that were here today. Not exactly what you expect, and considering most of them are white, to have had the blue car with the racing livery, and now the silver one here as well, is the icing on the cake, if you ask me. Two out of ten Icento Diecci's here at the same event. This brings us now to the end of the day. As you can see, a lot of the cars have already departed, but what a lineup that we've seen at the Quail this year. From the new introductions, the concepts, the hypercars, the presentations from different manufacturers, the way this event has grown and become such a hotspot for this type of thing. And we've seen the greatest new cars in the world, quite literally. The likes of the Zambo Aurora, the Mustang GTD, Lamborghini bringing something completely different, the Bugattis, Koenigseggs, Paganis, Hennessys, you name it. What an awesome day this has been. I hope you've enjoyed the video, seeing and taking everything in, a highlights tour, a whistle stop tour, if you will, around the Quail 2023. But that's it for now. Thank you very much for watching as always, guys. I appreciate your support an awful lot, and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.